Hey, hello to yet another Ask Us Anything uh, that is done in, somewhere in the background. So it's plural, Ask Us. And today we are going to talk about GitOps and uh, we'll try to answer as many questions as we can. So keep, keep them coming. There are some questions already sent in advance. I see that questions are coming in the chat. We're going to get to that in a second. For now, I just want to set the stage of what I think about GitOps, how GitOps works, and all that jazz. And then, uh, then I will uh, go through all the questions you have, or at least I hope that I will be able to go through all the questions. So GitOps, right? Initially, initial, the simplest possible definition of GitOps is that we have a desired state stored in Git, and that we have processes somewhere, whatever those processes are, that are converging the desired state into the actual state. And that desired state can be your applications, can be infrastructure, can be services, anything, right? Anything that needs to exist somewhere can and should be able, we should be able to define this desired state, storing it, and we have processes that converge that uh, the actual state into that desired state, right? That's a simple definition of GitOps. A more complicated one, uh, or let's say more up to date, is that uh, the desired state should be stored in a declarative format. Declarative format can be almost anything, can be JSON, YAML, HCL, anything. And that processes that are converging to states, and this is now important, uh, for, this will answer a couple of questions that we will go through later. Uh, processes that are converging the actual into the desired state are doing it continuously, right? So more advanced version is that uh, the process is constantly checking and, com and uh, converging those two states. There is a uh, constant fully automated uh, uh, drift detection going on and reconciliation. So think of it in terms like uh, if you create a Kubernetes deployment and uh, then Kubernetes deployment, this is not GitOps now, but the process is similar. Uh, in Kubernetes deployment, you specify, hey, this is how many replicas of an application I want to have. And deployment does not create those X replicas once, but it is maintaining that state all the time. So more advanced version of GitOps is that the process, whichever you're using, is constantly maintaining the synchronizing the two states, not doing it only once. Hmm? So, and uh, we'll go in more depth uh, because I see that there are some questions that are uh, consciously or subconsciously really related to that drift detection and reconciliation. So, we'll, we'll talk about it more uh, soon. Uh, that's a quick uh, explanation of what GitOps is. If it wasn't clear, let me know in the comments. And especially, this is super important. If you don't agree with that, even better, let me know and then we fight. I like fighting with people over, over definitions. Sometimes I even change my mind. You never know. Uh, questions coming in soon. Before that, first, uh, huge, uh, important things. Hey, like the video, please. Subscribe to the channel. Do the things. You know how uh, YouTube works. And I need to give a huge thanks. We have like... Um, how many? 40 uh, since last time, 40 give or take members of the channel. That's extremely useful, helps a lot to the channel that you join. It's uh, like a coffee price a month, something like that. And it helps a lot keeping the lights on. So please do that, join the channel. Of course, kind of if you want to throw in some sticker or whatever, I don't know, uh, whatever YouTube calls it, even better, right? But that's not really what we're uh, hoping here for what we are going to do now is go through questions. Uh, we'll combine questions, we'll mix, I think, a bit questions that uh, were sent before this session with uh, those that you're sending live. So we'll go through all of them. No, I hope so. So, Carl Webster, uh, hello, Victor. Not really GitOps related, but can but can be if you answer in a Git repo, then it counts. Cool. What do you do for writing notes on all the touch you use? I struggle with the mess of markdown files. Um, I don't know what to tell you. I write everything in markdown, literally. I haven't used 
anything but markdown unless somebody forced me like you know customer they open a google doc document or something like that and uh, i i haven't had that problem i do always have a kind of index file that contains the links to different sections of something or chap chapters of something and stuff like that but can't give you any advice because i never really had a problem uh, with that uh, myself now the important thing about I haven't had a problem is that most of the things I write in Markdown is not consumed as Markdown directly by other people. So it's mostly for me and Darin, two of us. Uh, so kind of it's very easy not to have a mess when you organize it for yourself, whatever the way is. And then that's consumed in different formats than Markdown by others. You know, it can be a book, it can be a course, it can be a video. So I, I, I'm myself, I'm not really writing Markdown for others to read in Markdown. So sorry for that. Uh, why Argo rollout is not a GitOps tool? So GitOps tools, uh, in an essence, are trying to converge the desired state stored in Git with the actual state somewhere. It can be application, infrastructure, whatever, right? Uh, what Argo rollout is doing is to uh, roll out an application um, uh, a little by little, right? You deploy a new release using Argo rollouts and it will expose 20% of requests, let's say, to that new release. Then it will monitor traffic, let's say, in Prometheus or somewhere else. And uh, if everything goes fine, if there are no issues and so on and so forth, it will increase the roll out of that release to, I don't know, 40%, 60%, 80%, 100%, right? So it is a progressive delivery tool. It really does not, there is no mechanism in Argo rollouts itself to synchronize what is stored in Git with what is running in a cluster. So Argo CD or Flux would do that synchronization, GitOps call it, right? And once it reaches a cluster, and what, once, once what is in a cluster is exactly the same as what is defined in Git, uh, Argo rollouts will, um, uh, will, will start increasing the percentage of the requests going or uh, traffic going to that new release. It's kind of, now, what would be nice is if, uh, if Argo rollouts or Flagger, which is a similar tool from VWorks, would be doing that not directly in a cluster, if it would make, be making those changes in a cluster, but if they would be modifying contents of a Git repo and then letting other tools synchronize, you know, kind of instead of Argo rollout saying, hey, I'm going to increase now from 20 to 40% the traffic to this, uh, this release, if they would be actually not do that at all, but modify Git repo and then letting Gargo CD or Flux do the synchronization, then it, in my opinion, it would be even better, uh, but they don't do that. So there is some kind of discrepancy in how those tools work compared to Git, uh, GitOps. Not a big one. Uh, Gwoden, um, I'm sorry in advance if I butcher your names. I'm, I'm sorry for that. Um, is managing AWS infrastructure through Terraform by making changes to Terraform code in Git, which triggers a deployment, considered GitOps? Depends. If you take the basic definition of GitOps, or if you take uh, the, the current, let's say, definition of GitOps, and this is not me inventing. If, if you go and search for GitOps defined by, uh, I, I forgot the name. There is, a, there is a group actually working on defining, among other things, what GitOps is. And so if you include in GitOps definition that there is that constant drift detection and reconciliation, then the answer is no, right? And the reason why the answer is no is um, Terraform and basically all the other, all the similar tools are CLI based tools that uh, will react when you react, right? Uh, so when you push something to Git, let's say that you push a Terraform definition to Git that says create seven clusters. No, I want to have seven clusters, not create. And then you have a process, let's say a webhook that will trigger something, let's say a pipeline that will execute that Terraform, Terraform apply, and then you, you would get seven clusters. Now, the thing that is missing there is that drift detection. 
if I destroy uh, per, on purpose or accidentally or something happens and one of those seven clusters get destroyed, I will continue having only six clusters in that example, right? Uh, because Terraform uh, and webhooks have no mechanism to detect the drift, to detect, hey, actually, you have seven clusters defining it. All of a sudden, now you have six. I should actually create the seventh cluster. I should actually converge the two states. So uh, you would get the missing cluster uh, with Terraform uh, only when you change Terraform definitions for some completely other reasons somehow, and then uh, another webhook is triggered, and then you uh, then you execute Terraform apply, and it would do not only the changes that you pushed to get the new changes, but it would also detect those those drifts. So kind of yes, but no, the answer. So I'm going to butt in for just a second. If sure. this information that you're hearing today is interesting, you could get another full hour plus with Victor today. He's going to be live over on Brett Fisher's channel, channel at, good grief, at 1 p.m. Eastern. I believe it's 1 p.m. Eastern, right? 7 p.m. Tomorrow. No, it's today. Ah, Brett, Brett, yes, Brett. yes, yes. Brett, not, not us. Tomorrow's yes. us. But So if you want to talk more, whatever, go bug Brett's channel today, too. So that would be a, a good thing. Exactly, to do. exactly. And also, uh, there is a quick reminder, some of you are members, there is also a member on the chat tomorrow. This is not YouTube, mm -hmm. not recording, stuff like that. We do it in Zoom. Uh, I think that I didn't tell you even. Uh, uh, okay. You didn't. Now you know That's as well. Fine. So tomorrow, there is a members on the chat as well. So okay. join. Good. <laughs> so if you join up the YouTube channel, you would get, I don't know how you're telling people, but how are you telling the members? Uh, I made a post in YouTube uh, that is, okay. uh, that is to only visible to members. Yes. Got it. Okay, cool. Uh, let's go ahead and move on to the next one. Another early ask question. So uh, what are the current drawbacks of GitOps? What should we expect from GitOps 2.0? Um, I think that the major drawback uh, is in, a, in the tools that are modifying the state, the actual state at runtime. So if I go back to Argo rollouts example, right? Uh, Argo rollouts will be modifying the state of your application. You know that increasing those percentages, for example, of how much traffic goes to the new release, how much traffic goes to the uh, old release. Uh, and during that period uh, or after uh, the tools change the state, the actual state, there is a discrepancy between uh, what GitOps tools see and think that they see and what is really happening. And then you can easily have a situation where some process in your cluster changes the states of something like progressive delivery, right? Many other examples. And then Argo CD goes and says, no, that's not what is in Git, right? Uh, I will actually undo those changes. Uh, and then you have a race condition that one tool is trying to change things directly in your uh, in the actual state um, at runtime, and then GitOps tool, Argo CD or Flux, are uh, figuring out that hey, then, no, 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 that, that it shouldn't be done. That's not what's it, what is defining it. So what I expect from GitOps 2.0 or whatever the name is is actually more and more tools uh, that are running uh, inside of our clusters. Uh, managing somehow infrastructure or uh, applications or whatever to be aware of that. And instead of in, instead of changing something at runtime, pushing changes to Git. I expect that to be to start happening more and more. So in other words, tighter integration on the right side of GitOps. So what happens after GitOps synchronizes uh, those those tools should be more aware of uh, of GitOps tools. And I expect that to come first from the family of projects that are very tight with GitOps, like Argo rollouts and Flagger are probably going to do start doing that first, uh, and then others will follow. Uh, now, quickly, there is a solution to that, just to clarify, uh, but it's a bit painful because if you use Argo CD or Flux, you need to, both of them have ways to define, to say something like, hey, ignore those fields. 
right? Ignore this, this, and that because those parts of my manifests are managed by some completely different entities that have no idea that you exist. Um, I haven't, so I haven't yet, uh, I, I, I looked at it briefly, but I haven't used yet cup controller and uh, I haven't used at least not much, only briefly YTT. So I have, I, I don't have an answer yet. Uh, Cup controller looks interesting, and um, I have it on my to-do list to spend some time with it. And YTT, with YTT, I'm going back and forth all the time. Every once in a while, I'm kind of like, hey, man, this looks interesting. And then I go through it and kind of like, maybe it's too much. Uh, kind of, it's, maybe it's increasing the complexity a bit too much or not. So I'm kind of going back and forth. It's like, um, you know, like being on a date. I like you. I don't like you. I like you. I don't like you. So I, I will go through it in depth sooner or later, for sure. But I don't have an answer yet. Would you use Argo CD for managing, managing more than one Kubernetes? Oh, definitely. Oh, definitely. Actually, Argo CD, uh, Argo CD was designed initially, uh, immediately. Uh, what's the name of the company? Oh, my, my brain stopped. Uh, Darin, if you remember the company that... Intuit? Intuit, yes. Yes, right. Actually, I'm not sure whether it was designed in Intuit or Intuit bought the company. I mean, they bought the company that did those projects. I think that at that time only was Argo Workforce. No, I'm not sure. Anyways, uh, it starts in Intuit, right? More or less. And Intuit right, runs things at scale. So, uh, yes, Argo CD... Uh, Argo CD works really, really well with many clusters, and I know companies, uh, which I, I cannot name companies almost ever, but that uh, use Argo City to manage their applications in Kubernetes clusters in plural. And I'm talking about tens or hundreds or, or, or thousands even or clusters. Uh, so there are many of those cases and it works very well. The major decision that you need to make is whether you will have Argo City a single instance of Argo CD manages multiple Argo, uh, cl uh, Kubernetes clusters, or you're going to have Argo CD in each of those clusters. Now, it depends from case to case, but without further info, like, nobody tells me anything uh, that might change my mind. By default, I prefer the model in which each cluster has its own Argo CD, mostly because then I can lock that cluster completely. Uh, because if I have a master Argo CD that manages multiple Kubernetes clusters, then I need to give it access to that cluster, to those clusters. Uh, so I need to open those clusters up. Uh, if I put Argo CD in each of those clusters, then they're all monitoring their own Git repository or shared Git repositories or what's or not, and there is no need for ingress traffic to that cluster at all. Okay, can uh, blue, green, and canary deployment in Kubernetes only be done by GitOps tools like Argo rollouts or can be used by default with Kubernetes uh, only? Uh, so you can, so it's hard to answer that one. So uh, first of all, I don't think that Argo rollouts is a GitOps tool, uh, Argo CD is. Uh, but uh, ignoring that, so what, uh, what those tools do is that they're automating very simple operations that you can do yourself, right? Uh, essentially, what they do is, let's say that you're using Istio, but the same thing applies to Linkerd and many other service meshes. You have virtual service uh, that says uh, this percentage, this weight uh, goes to this service, and this weight goes to that service, like 20%, 80%, uh, new release, old release. Uh, and then it watches metrics somewhere. Uh, that's optional. You, you don't have to do it, but most people do. And then after a period of time, says changes the virtual service in Istio, let's say, same thing with Linkerd or what's or not, to say, hey, now 40% here, 60% uh, there. Now, you can do that yourself. Um, it, it would be just a simple kubectl edit command, or you change your manifests, uh, just by changing those two numbers and applying them again with kubectl. Uh, they're just, those tools are mostly saving you from uh, 
being present yourself um, and uh, doing those changes manually. That's that's what I do. Uh, how do you implement Kubernetes operators when following GitHub principles? So operators themselves, that's just Kubernetes YAML, right? Uh, you just push it to Git repository and let Argo CD or Flux um, uh, synchronize it. So operators themselves, I don't, I don't, I might be missing something, but there is nothing really uh, that makes them different than uh, any any other Kubernetes resource. Um, essentially, Kubernetes operators are custom resource definitions, and uh, almost everything you do in Kubernetes these days contains custom resource definitions, no matter whether you know it or not. The bigger problem is what are those operators doing? What are they doing to a cluster that might uh, be in conflict with what uh, GitHub tools are doing to your cluster? And whether they change the state of runtime. So the effect of operators is bigger problem than operators themselves. Oh, Michael, you're demoing a lot of tools. Which tools do you actually use every day yourself? Hmm. So uh, <laughs> it depends on the day. <laughs> uh, I, I always have, so the only thing that, when I'm not doing demos, uh, uh, to begin with, in demos I use like typical terminal. I don't use terminal uh, in outside of demos. Uh, I The only thing that is always present in my case is Visual Studio Code. That's the only thing that is um, apart from browser. So browser and Visual Studio Code, uh, I'm going to ignore browser. Visual Studio Code is the only thing that is always, always, always running on my computer, on all my computers, right? Uh, the rest really depends. Um, I tend to uh, use Kind a lot uh, for a while now. I was in K3D, but K3D started having, I started having problems. So I have Visual Studio all the time on. I have K, uh, Kind like 50% time on. And then it really depends on what I'm doing. The rest is unknown in advance, to be honest. I use AWS and Azure and Google and the Sivo a lot. Uh, those four providers are kind of like, uh, all of those are used at least once a week in my case. Um, I work a lot outside of demos and what they do in public. Uh, I, I work with uh, different companies. And then it really depends on what they need and how can I help them. And then I tend to adjust for to them, right? But Visual Studio Code is the only thing always running. Can we use Helm with GitOps? Yes, definitely. Uh, both Flux and uh, Argo CD and all the other tools that I know, uh, they allow you to use at least as a minimum um, pure Kubernetes resources. Uh, customize and Helm. Now I'm not 100% sure for Flux, but uh, you might have slight problems with Helm with uh, Argo CD because uh, unless something changed, Argo CD does not use Helm directly. It does equivalent of Helm templates to convert your Helm into uh, pure Kubernetes manifest and then applies them, which is not a problem in itself, but if you have hooks in Helm, then that might be a problem. Uh, so you might see some issues if you use hooks, uh, nothing else as far as I know. Uh, so the quick answer to that, yes, you can use Helm with GitHub, no problem at all. George, oh, George, you're, you're from my part of the world or previous part, uh, probably. We are using Argo CD on a project. Uh, we are using Argo Vault plugin, but the problem is caching passwords by plugin. So we need to delete and create Argo app on any change. How do we manage secrets? So um, I don't use Vault much uh, outside of engagements with customers. So I'm not the best person to answer that. Uh, personally, I, I, I know that people have reasons to say that uh, this is not uh, as secure as it can be, but I, I like sealed secrets. Sealed secrets just work for me. So whenever I have a choice, I use sealed secrets. Uh, you will find the video on the channel somewhere. Um, and Vault is uh, only when I have to. 
Uh, and when I do use Vault, which is not often, and more often than not, I do not set it up themselves uh, myself because there are other people who already set it up and what's or not. But then it goes something like external secrets, which are actually synchronizing Vault with what is in in the cluster. So it it rarely get. I'm rarely in a situation that uh, that's related with Argo CD because Vault stuff almost never gets to Git. Uh, there are processes who, who create normal secrets. Hey, Mik Michael, sorry for the butchering your name. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, GitOps encourages us to keep secrets in our Git repos, but Vietnamese sealed secrets uh, always felt clunky to me. Were you able to discover a better solution in the meantime? Did hear about SOPs? Uh, Yes, uh, SOPS is another that I, I used in the past, a long time ago. So uh, this is important that what I'm saying is experience from a long time ago. Uh, simply it never felt good to me, SOPS. Um, it was kind of, it, it felt as something that was not really designed for Kubernetes and then it was made to work somehow in Kubernetes. Uh, it was more a feeling than anything else. And uh, and what I'm saying might be completely wrong because I haven't used it that much. But personally, I haven't had problems with sealed secrets. Uh, so cannot tell you much more. Uh, how to achieve dynamic environment feature branches uh, deployment on demand performance testing environment? So um, okay, so. Uh, if you're using Argo CD or Git or Flux, uh, both of them allow you to define what your application is. Um, and then you would just, uh, if it's dynamic, I, by dynamic, I assume that you mean kind of like, hey, uh, create this environment and then a while later, which can be a minute later or a week later, or whatever, destroy. So basically, as long as those definitions are stored somewhere, completely unrelated with this subject, you would just create Argo CD application or equivalent in Flux and say, hey, uh, the, the, here's a reference, here's a link to the manifest stored somewhere with uh, and, uh, and you need to kind of separate those things, base manifest plus uh, Argo CD application so that you can have as many applications pointing to the same manifests uh, as, as you have uh, environments. Uh, so it's just about, you know, git clone, uh, add this file, push it back to repository and then when you're finished, uh, git clone uh, remove the file, push it back to repository. I think I have a video somewhere on, on the channel uh, doing just that. Uh, I don't remember the title anymore, but if you ping me later, Sheriff, uh, I will, I will find, find out what's the, what's, what's, the, what's the video link. So if he did want to ping you, where's the best place to do that? Oh, uh, Twitter, uh, at vfarsic. Uh, mm -hmm. which I can probably post as comment somewhere. Uh, I'll figure it out later. Yep. Um, or LinkedIn, Victor Farsik. So if you search my name. Uh, here's or, the easiest thing. Wait, uh, there's one more. Toolkit. Oh, Slack. Yes, Slack. Uh, I think that there is all the info in the channel, uh, in about or something like that. If there isn't, somebody send me a comment and that's the, I should put, put it there. Yep. Okay. And... Uh, we're almost at the bottom of the hour. Do you want to say anything else? That's uh, your that's your hint what? to say. Well, we're not done. We're halfway done. Yeah. But, you know. What's uh, anything else? I, I I know that you have something in mind that I forgot, but I cannot remember what. It's okay. Just it's it's Remind it's play. Me. It's it's play. Go subscribe. Go do your subscribe thing. Ah, uh, yeah, 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 exactly, exactly. It's yeah. halfway through. Just do the subscribe thing. <laughs> Here is you need to put me full screen because it's on site. There you go. Subscribe, like the video, uh, everything. Join and the sponsor DevOps Toolkit and uh, uh, everything. I mean, look at it shining all over the screen. <laughs> what you can do with OBS? Imagine. By the way, I hope you're liking the the animations that and that's where your money actually goes from from joining and stuff like that to animations like the, the beginning of today's session uh we got it uh, just yesterday i uh, hope you liked it uh have you tried any micro os for kubernetes setup k3s maybe if so any insights yes yes uh so i haven't uh, set it up myself if that's the question you know raspberry pis and stuff like that 
but I use it a lot. Uh, I'm a heavy user of Sivo, for example, and Sivo is based on, based on K3S. Uh, and I think that more and more providers will be creating services based on K3S. Um, I, I don't think that K3S will replace, kind of be the new Kubernetes distribution used by everybody, but whenever you need performance and whenever you need it cheap, K3S is absolutely amazing. Apart from the obvious use case, which is Edge, which doesn't have a, a lot of CPU and memory anyways. And yes, I use it all the time. Uh, oh, another member, Christopher. Thank you so much. Thank you. I, I, I need to have an animation with uh, confetti flying around, something like that. Uh, uh, I think that we answered this, Darin, GitOps encourages. I think I answered it, but I'm old. Sometimes I forget things. Uh, Ideal edge analytics stack. I tried Telegraph, InfluxDB, and Grafana. Uh, I'm not sure for edge whether that should be any different. So uh, I might be missing something there. But uh, let me know if there are kind of what would be the special edge requirements uh, uh, in the comments, and then I might have a better answer. But uh, right now, I have I use two options. First of all, if something is offered by a provider. Um, then I use that kind of way. If I'm in Google, I use whatever they offer for storing metrics and um, and logs and stuff like that, mostly because uh, my time and time of other people working with me tends to be more expensive than whatever is the extra charge for those services. But when setting up myself, I prefer a combination of um, Locky for logs uh, Prometheus for metrics. Uh, sometimes Prometheus needs to be scaled up. Uh, that's a separate subject. And Grafana. So um, Grafana, Loki, Prometheus. Uh, we currently have two levels of users, devs and admins. How can we deal with that in GitOps? Two different repos with two separate Flux controllers with different permissions. Uh, so, uh, yes, that would be, depends what roles of those users are. Uh, if you can clarify that, that would help me answer better the question. Because if ops, uh, if admins are approving changes of users, then we are talking about, uh, having permissions to create pull requests and then somebody merges those pull requests. Uh, and that's kind of like a easier combination. Uh, if permissions are, hey, this is what you can push directly to the main line, uh, and those are the things that you cannot push directly to the main line, then we are talking most likely about different repositories, right? Uh, yes, different repositories. Uh, uh, what's your preferred strategy of managing Helm charts with Argo CD? You know what I mean. Dependency proxy chart is weird. So I I rarely, if ever, uh, use depend Helm dependencies with Argo CD because um, I think that Argo CD application manifest is replacing dependencies. Um, so I rarely. Oh, another member. Hey, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, so I'm uh, readily uh, doing dependencies anymore. Uh, maybe direct dependencies, you know, kind of like this application has a dedicated database, then yes. Uh, but other than that, it could be a bunch of Argo CD applications or pointing to different Helm charts and Helm charts being without many, if any, dependencies. <laughs> Uh, my comp, oh, this is whatever I say, uh, e I'm going to offend somebody. Um, my company is planning to adopt GitOps. Which would you wait, recommend? Flux? Wait, 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 wait. Uh, go ahead and offend both sides. Don't just give one answer, okay. but if, go ahead and offend both sides equally. Okay, I'll do my best. Okay. Uh, somebody needs to kind of start giving points and let me know if I offended one side more than the other. Uh, so, which would you recommend, Flux CD or Argo CD? The landscape is a combination of COPS and DKS. 
Uh, so I like both Flux CD or Argo CD. So, and I think that in isolation, both of them are give or take uh, equally good, right? Uh, what I like, the reason why I'm slightly more inclined towards Argo, um, and I'm saying intentionally Argo, not Argo CD. And you probably noticed that in my videos, I have many more, much more material on Argo CD than, than Flux, is because of the Argo ecosystem. So Argo, Argo CD is just one of the many projects in Argo um, organization, right? There is Argo CD, there is Argo workflows, there is Argo events, um, there is what else? Argo rollouts, and those are the four official projects. And then there's a bunch of sub projects uh, which nobody can follow anymore. So kind of Argo has a really healthy ecosystem. And I think that <clears throat> Argo itself, including Argo CD, has a much healthier open source com community, which much bigger growth than uh, Flux and other VWorks open source projects. So from open source perspective and from community perspective and from the ecosystem perspective, I prefer Argo. Now, Flux has a advantage of VWorks. So if you want, if you want an enterprise support for your tools, then VWorks will give it to you with Flux and all the other tools that they have. So if you prefer to choose something that is open source, but then also has an enterprise layer on top, then Flux wins. Now, how long that will stay, I'm not really sure because I see more and more companies building enterprise solutions on top of Argo. There is my previous company, Codefresh, building on top of Argo. Uh, there is Concrete, uh, Argo CD as a service, and a bunch of others. Uh, I'm going to skip naming them all, but uh, enterprise layer is being built on top of Argo as well. So the advantage of, so right now advantage Flux, if you want enterprise support, um, enterprise layer on top. Uh, if you're more interested in open source, pure open source, then definitely Argo. Uh, how long before cloud providers come up with GitOps as a service? Uh, probably not long, probably not long. Uh, the question is more that uh, whether, so they will definitely come up with that. I'm sure of that. Whether so now some providers are going to adopt existing tools uh, and better integrate them with their own stuff. Um, but the major obstacle right now that providers have, and when I say providers in this context, I'm mostly thinking about AWS, uh, Google, and Azure, is that they're mostly concerned not that much with applications. They're concerned with infrastructure and services. Uh, so, and it's very clear that GitHub's direction is very, very, very tied to Kubernetes itself. Uh, that means that providers first need to figure out how to expose all their API as Kubernetes resources. Once they do that, then the step after that would be tighter integration with GitHub. So actually, probably they would not even need to know do anything. Um, to integrate the existing GitOps tools and they might build, build GitOps tools on themselves. But I think that the missing step for them is to expose their APIs um, as Kubernetes resources first. And I know that all three giants are working on that right now. Uh, now, this is, now this is shameless plug, here we go, upbound. Uh, it's still, we are negotiating, uh, upbound is cross-plane, uh, company behind Crossplane where I work, which is doing exactly that. Everything defined as Kubernetes resources. And right now are going on kind of negotiations, whether they will jump into Crossplane, 100% open source everything, right? Uh, and start leveraging Crossplane to do that, or they will be building their own, still unknown. I hope for the former, uh, but we'll see. But first step before that, they need to expose all their services as uh, Kubernetes resources. Uh, hey, Victor, what would be the best strategy to deploy an application using Helm, which has some dependencies with AWS resources managed by Terraform? There is no operator yet for... No. Uh, so uh, 
if Terraform is a requirement, then I suggest that actually you uh, you do it in a traditional way, right? Push to Git webhook notifies a Terraform running somewhere, Terraform applying kubectl apply, right? Uh, the other direction, the kind of true direction of GitOps, which is process pooling changes in Git, um, I don't think that that's working well yet from Terraform perspective. Um, so, uh, Valen, just wanted to say thank you for your contact. I'm a cloud DevOps engineer, and you introduced me to Argo CD and workflows. Absolutely preferred over Jenkins. Uh, thank you for thanking me. Uh, we provision Kubernetes with Terraform along with other cloud resources like I am to role, security groups, etc. cetera. Uh, yeah, that, uh, if, if we, ah, okay, there's more. If we are using Argo CD, how can we ingest cloud resources and have values like security group ID that will be used by Nginx Ingress? Uh, I, I don't think that there is an easy way to do that with Terraform. That's a short answer. I mean, that's precisely the reason. And again, take this with a grain of salt because I am heavily involved with Crossplane. That's the what you're describing here is precisely the reason, not the only reason. One of the reasons why we're building Crossplane because it needs to be Kubernetes for us to do that. And Terraform is not Kubernetes yet. Uh, will Argo CD and Flux converge? Should there be something like GitOps interface? No, that is highly unlikely to happen. Uh, a while ago, a couple of years ago, or maybe even less. There was an effort to create, I, I forgot what was the name, GitOps engine or something like that, a common mechanism to do common operations in, and uh, create such tool by both uh, Argo and uh, Flux communities uh, and companies uh, that have interest in them to create a common set of libraries, processes, what's or not, and then build on top of that so that, uh, so that they stop uh, reinventing the wheel because it's a race right now. Whatever Flux does, Argo CD copies. Whatever Argo CD does, Flux copies. Anyways, but that 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 uh, that joint venture failed. Um, it's a long story. Uh, you should Google it. I don't, don't want to go against either of the two. Uh, but anyway, uh, it was a marriage that did not last long uh, and ended up in divorce. Uh, Yandex Cloud. I did not yet try it. I did not try it yet, uh, but uh, I, I will go through all the chat comments and like Yandex, I will, I will put it in my to-do list to, to try it. Um, uh, I recall you suggesting in the previous Ask Me Anything to have a Git repo for per environment, dev prod for an applications config, because customers keep us on one repo, should it? Um, I personally prefer, unless we're talking about very small, small operation, I prefer having Git repo, repo, repo for environment. Uh, I, I'd absolutely hate doing it in separate branches because I think that all branches should be mergeable to the mainline. And if you start keeping branches for that, you will not be able to merge to the mainline. Uh, and I prefer keeping branches as a temporary entities, never permanent. So I don't like branches. Uh, so it's either different directories in the same repo or different repositories. Now, if you want to keep different directories, that's fine. I don't see a a big difference. Uh, I still prefer different repositories. And one of the reasons is one of the previous questions about permissions, because then I can fine tune permissions on Git on Git repo level. Hey, you, those are the people who can do push things to production. Those are the people who can push things to dev. Uh, but if you have no issue with permissions, directories in the same repo are fine. Uh, the important thing to note here is that whenever I say different repositories, different directories and stuff like that. I'm not talking about the manifest themselves. Manifest themselves in my head, ideally should always live in the repository of application. So I'm talking only and exclusively of those repositories hosting only uh, Git, uh, Argo CD application manifests, you know, those 10 lines of YAML per application, not more. And in my case also I, I do, GitOps on infrastructure as well. Um, so it doesn't have to be application, but Argo CD application, the reference is manifest somewhere else. Uh, 
dynamic ephemeral environment with GitOps Kubernetes, what is the best approach? Uh, so this is this is something that I have split opinion and I go I personally go back and forth. Uh, sometimes I'm in a mood of creating them by, um, you know, pushing changes to Git repository and then deleting files from Git repository. So kind of like do it on a Git repo, you know, what I was explaining at the very beginning, push Argo CD application, remove when you want to destroy an environment. Uh, but then I don't think that there is necessarily uh, a lot of value in doing it through Git, GitOps. Uh, because they're they're really temporary ephemeral. Um, so if it's something ephemeral, there is it's not really there is not nothing terribly wrong just doing kubectl apply. What I do think is absolutely awesome is if we combine those things with uh, GitOps or not GitOps with um, V cluster for example or any other solution for virtual clusters, and then ephemeral environment gets its own virtual cluster. Do whatever you want there there. Destroy the whole cluster, virtual cluster, not the real one. When you're finished, and that's it. Whether you involve Git, GitOps in that or no, I don't think is that important because, as, as your question says, it's ephemeral. Really, it's not something that um, lives long. Who uh, we use HashiCorp Vault for secrets management? Any insights on using external secrets to manage uh, secrets in GitOps friendly way? Not yet. Uh, I was exposed a lot to external secrets. Uh, the GoDaddy project, I'm assuming that DAO is moved to be a Kubernetes SIG. I was exposed to it a lot, but in all the cases, somebody else, uh, whenever I, uh, I started working with it, somebody else um, already set it up. So I never really dived deeper in it. Uh, I have to do that sooner or later. So I will have more info on that soon, I hope. Uh, thanks for previous answer. Any books you would recommend on the GitOps topic? Unfortunately, no. Uh, and what I'm going to say will sound horrible, especially since I wrote a bunch of books. I haven't read any book in a long time. Um, and I have a good excuse for that, I believe, because mostly I deal with things before the books get published. Uh, I'm trying to be very close to the edge. Uh, so. I, I, I haven't read the book for a long, long time. Um, so I cannot recommend any. Uh, is V cluster mature enough for production grade multi tenancy? I think it is, give or take. I mean, let's put it this way uh, V cluster might be the most mature solution of that kind. Whether it's mature, I mean, most of the things we do today with Kubernetes is not mature by what we considered mature in the past, right? It takes years until something is rock solid and stuff like that. And most of the projects that we use today do not exist for more than a couple of years. So almost nothing is really mature. And we're all, in Kubernetes, we're all playing with the edge, right? Uh, that being said, V cluster is the one I trust the most. So if, if I change the question and say, which one is the most mature? then the answer would be V cluster. Uh, what is the best way to use encrypted values, not necessarily Kubernetes secrets inside the Helm values that would be decrypted by Argo CD when deploying an app? Thanks for the content, Victor. So uh, to begin with, Argo CD is not going to decrypt anything. Uh, at least not that I know. Argo CD will apply things as they are defining it. And you have some other processes that will decrypt that something. So if you store some file yeah, that with encrypted values, uh, Argo CD will create a Kubernetes uh, resource with those same encrypted values. And then uh, decrypting it will happen by some process in the cluster. Sorry, uh, after Argo CD does its job. Um, uh, I prefer um, I prefer uh, sealed secrets, which I mentioned before. Um, but I still have pending to deep dive in, in, into a few others, and maybe I'm wrong. Are there any GitOps tools or workflows you can recommend that work with DCS or Nomad, or do you think GitOps will continue to remain, remain Kubernetes-centric? So, 
yes, I think that GitOps will be mostly focused on Kubernetes. And I'm not even saying, and actually the question is wrong. Everything will continue to remain Kubernetes centric. Simply because think of Kubernetes as being a huge black hole that sucks everything in, right? Uh, and that means that almost every vendor, every software vendor or service provider has to, whether you want it or not, has to design their something new to be first for Kubernetes. And then if there is sufficient demand or interest to do it for other platforms like Nomad or ECS, right? So uh, I stand very firmly on saying that almost everything will continue to remain Kubernetes centric, mostly because almost everything will continue to remain Kubernetes first, everything else second, right? Um, so uh, if, you, if you think of it as a uh, uh, math formula, everything starts with Kubernetes and it might get, it might, if you're lucky, get to ECS and Nomad later. That means that ECS and Nomad can in best case have the same amount of tools, but realistically uh, much less. And that's also, uh, I have a couple of questions related to Nomad, which I'm keeping for um, uh, for other session dedicated to, let's say, Kubernetes, something like that. But that's my main reason why I don't think that uh, we should be using Nomad or ECS, most of us. There, there can be a good use case and say, hey, for me, Nomad works better or ECS works better and then great. But from the tooling ecosystem perspective, nothing beats Kubernetes right now, not even close. Uh, James Carr, do you have any techniques for bootstrapping 100% of the infrastructure required to get the basic architecture set up, front and back end database and everything else required to, uh, to get those working? When working on small projects, I, I like to be able to completely tear down an environment and bring it back from scratch. Now again, TLDR, I'm heavily involved with Crossplane, uh, so take this with a grain of salt. But that's one of the problems that we are trying to solve. Crossplane composites. If you go to the if you go to the channel and search for crossplane composites, uh, you will see it says there is a banner that says huge letter composites. Uh, as you will see the use case for that. Basically, what we are trying to do is to allow you to compose a bunch of things into easy to expose. Um, interface so you say hey i need this infrastructure those services let's say a cluster a database this application is told in a cluster blah 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 blah. you put that all in the package and say and this is yaml this is uh open api uh definition through which you can manage that so you end up with all that package in a in a very simple interface custom defined for you by you and then you can just kubectl apply kubectl delete of that 10 or 20 lines of YAML. Again, I feel bad giving crossplane as examples because I'm biased. So I'm trying to do that only when I truly believe that that's the best option. Sometimes not even then. Uh, what tools do you use to get notified when your cluster is dead? Something is extremely wrong and need to be fixed uh, ASAP. Um, Again, depends. Uh, sometimes I will get notifications from vendors themselves. You know, if I set up CloudWatch in AWS or something like that. Uh, if I exclude those, then um, then I would I set up. I tend to set up Argo events. Uh, that uh, sorry, Argo events for some things, um, and uh, Prometheus alerts or what's the name? Alert manager, I think, from Prometheus for all the cases, which is majority when I'm watching metrics and then sending notifications when something cannot be fixed. So alert manager. Uh, you suggest keeping source code in the same repo as the manifests. Most people suggest keeping them separately. Argo CD considers this as a best practice, I think. We disagree <laughs> in that case. Uh, so uh, I, 
take this, uh, the reason why I disagree with that is that I believe that tests of an application should be the same place where application code is, right? You run tests while you write code. I believe that build scripts, uh, builds, build scripts uh, the build binary of your application should be in the repo of the application because I need to build via develop that application, right? And so on and so forth. And if we do agree on that, that tests should be where application is and build scripts should be where application is and Docker files should be where application is, then I do not see the good reason why manifests of the application shouldn't also be where application is. Uh, if I look at it from development perspective, hey, <coughs> while I'm developing application, I need to deploy it somewhere. Let's say local Kubernetes cluster. Am I going to go through a, to a different repository for that? And if I, if I do, then should I have a different repository also for build scripts and different repository for Docker file and different repositories? Should I split my application, everything related to an application into 17 repositories? Or uh, Kubernetes manifests are exception and everything else is not an exception? Difficult choice, right? Now, I think that the main argument why not to keep it in rip of application is that, hey, when I need to update a tag of my release, then I will have an infinite loop, you know, kind of like, <coughs> because I need to push something to that Git repo and what's or not. I don't think that's a valid argument because tags and things that are specific to an environment are not going to the, to the place where the base manifests. That's stored in Argo CD application manifest, which lives somewhere else. Uh, so uh, everything that is related to an environment, specific to an environment, I keep it outside of that application repository. So I don't know, host, uh, special ho host through which it is accessed in production, tag and so on and so forth. That's all kept in Argo CD application manifest or Flux application manifest. Um, and then I almost never change the base manifest. Um, then I don't have the problems and I have a lot of benefits for that. But uh, a couple of other people told me that kind of like, hey, you disagree with uh, with some other people and I do a lot. But we never disagree, right? Uh, oh, uh, your audio came late. You need to oh, repeat. We, we never disagree, right? Uh, we, you and me? Yeah. Uh, much less than me and everybody else. Okay. Uh, we're almost <laughs> at the top of the hour. And also, even though we had the cool intro, we don't have a cool exit. We don't have a cool outro credits. We don't have yeah. a credits thing. Yeah. So that, yeah. that'll be, uh, that'll be coming later <laughs> in probably credits. Okay. Sorry. No, yeah. Go. You still have to get credits. Yeah. So yeah. But th there is one thing that now that you said credits that uh, reminds me, uh, if you watch now the, uh, the the end of videos as a thank you, all the members are listed there. So mm -hmm. members are credits now in the videos. We need to put it here as well. Correct. That that was the reminder. So uh, uh, that was the reminder. That was the reminder. So this this is going to be a very cold close, and we'll just basically have to say goodbye because Victor has to get ready for his next live stream with Brett in about thirty minutes. He has to be there in thirty minutes. Right? Brett is awesome. I, I don't yeah. know why anybody came here. You need to go to Brett. Brett is awesome. Uh, I'm kidding. Stay here, but come to Brett as well. Brett Fisher. Yep. yep. That starts at the top of the next hour, but Victor has to be there early. So let's uh, let's give Victor a break to uh, head out. And uh, I'll I'll let you say the goodbye, and then I'll just hang up the phone call, if you will. So, yeah. So goodbye. And one thing that we did not yet finalize, but very likely this will be every second week. So, uh, and then keep sending questions. Uh, in the, some of those questions that we answered today uh, were from sent in advance. Some of them are from the live chat. We probably didn't answer all the questions. If we didn't then we keep recording them and we'll answer them sooner or later. So subscribe so that you get a notification. There will be another Ask, ask Us Anything session, probably also themed, like this was GitOps, next one will be, I don't know, DevOps, Kubernetes, something, whatever you vote to, whatever you vote for, because you voted for GitOps to be uh, the next one. Thank you so much. Cheers. <laughs>